Our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jeremy. I am very grateful for all I have learned here about Christian science that has helped me to be calmer, to be a less aggressive driver, and to be in the now instead of thinking about the future and past all the time. I used to always feel late for everything, as though I needed to rush through everything. But simultaneously, I would also have sadness and regret about past interactions and missed opportunities filling my thought. Over time, at this church, with all that's offered here, including regular practitioner support, I have learned to start the day with God and to work to keep myself in that right place by listening and praying at, for what he's trying to tell, for what he's telling me to do all day long, and also knowing that the past and future are his. Learning to live this way has given me both a feeling of peace and a feeling of being useful, which I'm so grateful to know all mankind will feel as they come to Christian Science. I'm so grateful for all the blessings that being a member of this church has brought to my life, and I'm grateful to have a part in this mission for the world. Thank you. And now I have a testimony from Imogen in Australia. How I love our beautiful Plainfield Independent 24-7 reading room. I was listening again to the Bible study from 17th of September. Thank you so much to Thomas and Linda and everyone who contributed to this wonderful Bible study. The conversation in that Bible study was all about how priceless the scriptures actually are, how blessed we are to have the Bible, how blessed we are to have the key to the scriptures in Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy, and it really got me to thinking of the power of his word. I was raised in a Mormon third-generation upbringing, and at the age of 15 I excommunicated myself and went on a journey to find God. I knew the Mormon theology was in error, so I searched many religions to find God. In my Mormon upbringing, we were never taught about the Bible. I didn't know much at all about the Bible, other than some accounts of the healing career of Christ Jesus. But through that search, there was one thing that I clung to throughout all those years of searching for God. It's from John 8.32. Quote, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When God brought me to Christian science, I was made free. Decades later, I am free. My first three readings of science and health were all about prayer, getting the prayer right with signs following. So it was very much focused on healing. But since then, all those years ago, I have been experiencing a remarkable awakening to the Word of God that will never pass away throughout all generations. In Luke is written a statement by Jesus, quote, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Mary Baker Eddy expressed this, quote, no human pen nor tongue taught me the science contained in this book, Science and Health, and neither tongue nor pen can overthrow it. I am so grateful to be a member of this church. I am so grateful to the teaching that is freely given in this church. Dearest Plainfield Independent, you have saved us so many times here in Australia. I am learning so much every day. So tonight, I really wanted to thank each and every person who contributes their diligence in the Christ, contributes their thinking, shares their lessons of growth in the Christ. Thank you to our holy practitioners and teachers. Each day we come to the Father. We come to the kingdom of his love. Sure and surer and stronger and clearer. It is the joy of my life and the blessing of my life to know God 
in Christian science, the wonders of his love, and it is all written down for us to study and demonstrate. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Thank you. Mara from Mississippi, go ahead. I'm so happy that I found Plainfield Christian Science Church. I'm also extremely grateful for the help and support of my practitioner. Earlier this week, I woke up with a severe pain in my side. I continued with my day and did everything that I needed to do. However, I continued to be conscious of this pain. Although I was praying about it, the pain did not subside. The next day I called my practitioner and had a few things I wanted to talk to her about. I explained to her that I felt like I was progressing with feeling, um, feeling less sensitive to people's negative actions and able to love more, towards, feel love towards them more. Um, this is a huge challenge for me because I've always um, been very sensitive to uh, people and um, care too much about what others think of me. Um, we started to talk about love and how important it is to love everybody and everything. Um, not with human love, but divine love. She told me that Mrs. Eddy said, to even love the blades of grass under your feet. Um, an overwhelming feeling of happiness and love came over me. And I know that God is love and God is everywhere, so love is everywhere. Um, I started to think about all the workers at the Plainfield Christian Science Church and how they work so hard to spread Christian science and love throughout the world. Um, after this discussion, I told her that I didn't feel the need to discuss anything else on my list. <laughs> so I never even mentioned the pain in my side. A few minutes later, I took my dog for a walk and started to love and appreciate everything around me. Um, and then I realized that the pain in my side was completely gone. Um, and this made me even happier. <laughs> um, I'm so grateful for all I'm learning through hearing testimonies and the roundtable discussions and um, reading all the resources from the website. And also, thank you to Bruce for the inspirational readings tonight. Thank you. Sherry. Sherry from California. Go ahead. Thank you. I was told by the mother of a ballerina that whenever her daughter started with a new ballet master, they did not want to see how she danced. They started fresh. And as I began to learn the correct teaching of Christian science, after a while, I wanted to stop correcting the wrong instruction I was taught and also work to start fresh. One of the definitions of mourning in the glossary of science and health is revelation and progress. So starting fresh also every morning has been one of my prayers. Father, Mother, God, reveal to me today what you reveal for me to progress. So starting fresh with the correct teaching of Christian science and starting fresh every morning with revelation and progress. Both have been so very helpful to me as I go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Misha Hila from Canada, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I am grateful today to be learning to let things roll off my back instead of revolting or feeling offended. I like to stand up for what feels right for me 
to the point where not seldom it results in discussions over discussions. Often no resolution is reached and hard feelings remain. I read often the chapter Taking Offense in Miscellaneous Writing by Mary Baker Eddy. And I am starting now to let things that offend me roll off my back. I also was made aware of what 117 from 500 watching points by Gilbert Carpenter. There, Mrs. Eddy is cited. The quote is, when the foot steps upon me, I bend as does the grass, and when it is lifted, I come up as naturally." End quote. In recent days, I took the opportunity to exercise this humble bending. When an argument hit me that I felt is offending, I bowed down mentally. What a revelation this was. I didn't feel the tension that occurs usually when arguing back. I rather literally felt uplifted. This in turn allowed me to act de-escalating instead of throwing oil into the fire, what I so often did. The few times that this has happened in recent days, it was relieving and liberating. I am overly, overly grateful to learn to be humble like a blade of grass and to liberate me from anger and the feeling of being offended. I am so grateful for the many inspirations this church in Plainfield and its community provide for me and for all. I'm grateful for the eternal teachings of Christ Jesus and for Mary Baker Eddy's revelation and <clears throat> all the wonderful testimonies of the early workers about the practical application of Christian science. Thank you that I can be part of this meeting, and I wish you all a very, very nice evening. Thank you. Barbara Orkan from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Uh, hello. Um, about three weeks ago, I, I woke up with the thought that the cause of Christian science must be primary in my experience and that membership in the Plainfield Church would be essential. And so I did apply, and last week I got received a, a kind, loving letter of acceptance. It's really re-acceptance, and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy from North Carolina. Sandy from North Carolina. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I've been away for many months, but I always follow all the readings and your website, Christian Science Independence. I'm learning now the importance of the word they say, practitioner support. Ms. Mary Baker Eddy understood the importance to having practitioners to support us with our praying work. I'm very grateful, I'm going to say with humility, I'm very grateful. Practitioners, what she gives to my husband, Timothy, body. I took it for me. I've been blessed. I've been healed. I this message of the practitioner day through Sandy and stay with us through. I know the truth 
and they threw make you free. I've been in the United States for more than 30 years, unable to get my citizenship, and this week been granted to me. Thank you to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Lumento of Miss Mary Baker Eddy, and for the wonderful practitioner who speak with moral authority in her round table. Hey, I love what she's saying. If you don't want to be a student, and this is a hard work, you be over there with Material America. <laughs> or is this? Or you might have to go to chemo, you know? I've been healed. When I came to you short in Nebraska, I did have a big tumor in my breast. <laughs> I couldn't talk about it. You know, the things that happened to me, it's no cancer. Yes, with a little body, was body, the inner vision. I'm so grateful for Christian scientists independent, for hard decisions around the world the way Miss Mary Baker Eddie wanted to be done it. You're doing it correctly. I'm going to be able to be American citizen. The inner vision. I'm so grateful for her thoughts, for all the workers, uh, independent Christian scientists. I'm still a baby. I'm still learning. I'm still working. I just need to be more obedient. I'm so grateful for this meeting tonight, for the hymn for blessing the community and blessing the world. With, the, with my father's children that I want to be. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Yes. Nancy from Texas, go ahead. Uh, good evening. I want to express my gratitude for Christian science and the ability to apply it to every aspect of my life. It's not just for physical healing, but when a it's applied. It works for relationship issues, financial needs, and general mental health. Recently, I needed to call a practitioner from Plainfield. She was very supportive and gave me several inspirational items to work with while I was under the weather with flu-like symptoms. The healing came quickly, and I was able to resume normal activities much faster than my non-Christian science friends with the same symptoms at the same time. Christian science has been my only physician all of my life, and for this I am truly grateful. And I'm thankful for the Plainfield Independent Church and all of its members who work tirelessly to give us our daily manna through the website, publications, and church services. Thank you. Thank you. Shahidat from Maryland, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you very much for those readings. I would like to express my gratitude tonight for the rich content on the website. In particular, there's a link for Roundtable Archive, which I found very useful. It contains a recap of the discussion, including links to articles and citations, along with the watching point and the opening prayer. I am very grateful for this valuable resource. It's been very helpful for me as I progress in my learning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Dale from Virginia, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you for those excellent readings on progress as the law of God. And also, thank you for all the testimonies. The September issue of Love is the Liberator addresses the subject of handling the weather. In it is this argument from Watch's Prayers and Arguments given by Mary Baker Eddy. Quote, God governs all, is all in all. God is our constant guide and guardian. No mortal thought, known or unknown, seen or unseen, can interfere with the manifestation of love's presence with us. The weather manifests God's government 
and no evildoers can change this fact. The devils of human thought, all the powers of many minds, are powerless in love's presence. God is all. God is mind. End quote. I am so grateful for all the tools we are given in this independent church, the weekly lessons, the watches, all the truths we have to study and draw closer to God every day. I was reminded of an experience I had a number of years ago. I worked and prayed quite a while one morning and got so much good out of the study. Then later in the morning, we got a phone call from our son speaking in a very shaky voice and telling me that he had just gotten hit by lightning. He was describing the symptoms, but kept saying, I'm all right, I'm all right. I immediately told him that he was all right, completely surrounded and protected by God, and that nothing could touch him but good. He was quite shaken, so we talked a while. And by the time we hung up, he was assured and back to normal. There were several, there were severe thunderstorms in the area, and I told him that he would continue to be safe and protected, that nothing could harm him or anyone else. This whole time, I felt so confident in the truth that I was telling our son. Fear never entered my thought. And I felt so uplifted and grateful to God. I know it was the study and prayer that I did that morning that especially made me ready to face the situation. My heart is full of gratitude for the strong stand for the allness of our Father, Mother, God taken in this independent church. The unified work done here and the love and compassion that is sent out to the whole world. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy. Nancy from New Jersey, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you for the inspiring readings, uh, the beautiful music, and the very beautiful testimonies tonight. It was read from Science and Health on page 235. Clergymen occupying the watchtowers of the world should uplift the standard of truth. They should so raise their hearers spiritually that their listeners will love to grapple with a new right idea and broaden their concepts. When I read this this afternoon, I thought... This church is exactly that, a watchtower for the world, uplifting the standard of truth for the world through our outreach on our website, in our every service, roundtable, Bible study, and in our watches, that every activity of this church is ever supplying us with new right ideas to think deeply about and to aid us in our progress fostering in us a love for God and for the pure Christian science taught here. Webster's 1828 Dictionary gives the following definition of watchtower. A tower on which a sentinel is placed to watch for enemies or the approach of danger. How grateful I am for the teachings and instructions were given here so that in turn we can, armed with Mrs. Eddy's pure Christian science, become sentinels ourselves in watching for the world. I'm so very grateful for the steadfast loving support of my practitioner for this church. I am so grateful to God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and I am so very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Shardell. Hello. While thinking about my testimony for Wednesday, tonight, 
Several things came to mind for which I am grateful. Because of this church and practitioner support, I have been learning more about God and the importance of trust, faith, inspiration, gratitude, and humility. When I first started to pray about this, I only thought about a newly discovered trust with my church work and personal family members. But it came quickly that other qualities were entwined with this trust, and the other four were not separated, but included. The whole ball of wax, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> so to speak. For instance, I am grateful for the inspiration that comes from finding things in science and health or the Bible that lift my thought right up. Ideas that come gently for work needed to be done here at church, trusting God in prayer for family and mankind, knowing his presence, guides, guards, and governs all human events, near and far, our church workers, school children, adults at work, our courts, government offices, the weather, and those traveling, etc. With all this comes deep humility in seeing what God does, and as I become more obediently obedient, I gladly go forth each day to serve the cause of Christian science, the Christ science, as taught by Mrs. Eddy. Here lies all the answers to human needs. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight. I want to express my gratitude for all the teaching that goes on of Mrs. Eddy's Baker, Mary Baker Eddy's Pure Christian Science here at the Plainfield Independent Church. The lessons that I can see over time are very universal and impersonal. Sometimes it may take different, different forms and in individual experiences, but they all serve the same purpose to have us turn to God, learn to use our Christians, uh, use Christian science correctly and demonstrate our oneness with God. That our, and through with our textbooks, Science and Health with Key to Scripture by Mary Baker Eddy and the Bible given to us by God. Today I had an issue with my computer that I was having difficulty solving. I was looking for the most efficient way to go forward and it seemed that there should be a simple solution, but the steps I kept taking were getting me nowhere. It was then that I realized I was using my human effort and human mind and uh, falling back on what I would call experience with the computers, thinking I could just solve it. It was a humbling moment when I realized I needed to turn to God to solve this problem. And I was reminded of a testimony that I heard in our teaching testimonies, and it was referring a book, uh, to a book that's uh, called A Century of Christian Science Healing, and the testimony is called, There is No Problem Divine Mind Cannot Solve. And it's under our Mary, Be uh, Ma <laughs> Mary Beth Singletary's Testimonies tab, if anyone wants to go back. So I don't, won't go into the whole testimony, but in it, a, mechan a person had to solve a mechanism issue with an aircraft that went through sound, uh, sound barriers, and he did solve it, but it was all through prayer. And uh, so I was remembering that, and then as I was sitting there, quietly a thought came, and I tried it, and it worked. And it wasn't anything that I had tried before or even thought of using, and I'm so grateful. And it just is a good reminder that we uh, should not be saying we can't do something or uh, don't have an answer or don't want to try any of the excuses that there is a way to solve all our problems through God. We just have to be willing to listen. I'm so grateful to be here at this uh, church and be a member and to be at this meeting tonight. Thank you. Thank you. 
Craig. Thank you, Bruce, for those really helpful and good readings. It, <clears throat> it lifts my heart every time I hear from Mrs. Eddy saying, you, know, you, can, you can heal, <laughs> you can change, you can make things better. Before getting to this church, that was just a hope that things would be better. And often, uh, more uh, when uh, just to settle, well, you do the best you can and then go on about your business in, in either helping someone or dealing with some <clears throat> news report, but not in this church. In this church, we've been taught to face it and, and handle it, to know that all that God made, Genesis 1, that's what we have to expect and demand, and uh, to uh, know that nothing else can stand around. It's not of God, and it's, it's not for anyone. I, uh, I love the same statement. It says in Romans, Paul said, all things work together for good to those who are, to those, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And if you look around and think of people on the phones even, and the internet, they're all been called to his purpose and all things work together for good. When I got to this church, I, I love that statement. And until I realized that I had to make sure my consciousness and my thinking were good, and like the lesson says, there is no sin, sickness, or death, to realize those are unrealities. And I every day had to stop believing in bad things with the possibility of them, then good things happened to me. I, was without, I uh, didn't have a job at one point. And when I picked up the article Finance by Big New Young, and it said change consciousness if you want to change your surroundings, your experiences, and I, hmm. I said, you know, I'm believing a lot of bad stuff that it's not true. God never made it. And when I did that, almost immediately I got hired. And it's been working for me ever since with the help of a practitioner to just to remember what God made, that's what people deserve. What he has for them, that's what they will have. And it does take moral courage to stand, but it's well worth it. I thank God for Mary Baker Eddy and all the support we have to stand up and, and face whatever we need to face and to, and to, uh, and to win. Even in the midst of, seem, of discord, there's a lesson be going on, and it will work out in, in your favor and God's favor. Thank you. Thank you. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce, for the very important readings tonight and for the hymns as well. Tonight, I'd like to give gratitude, immense gratitude, for Christian science and its revealing of our oneness with God, God's almighty allness, which helps with the progress to uncover every error as nothing. That error cannot be real if God never created it. On page 92 of Science and Health, we find that on line 21. Until the fact concerning error, namely its nothingness appears, the moral demand will not be met, and the ability to make nothing of error will be wanting. I'm so grateful for this, and I thank God that through what Mrs. Eddy left all mankind, our oneness with God is becoming clearer and clearer. From this standpoint, we see that nothing of the temptations that come and dismissing them as nothingness and powerless also becomes more effective. We must do this. We must always, every day, keep knowing our oneness with God and the nothingness of error. Because if we don't do that, we're dishonoring God 
and really saying as if he could have created a sick sinning man as his own image and likeness. And how can we progress from such a basis? I am so grateful, really, for also what he, she tells us our third duty is. It says, it shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged or, and justified or condemned. This has been very helpful because it really helps in daily not my practicing myself or others. And I hope we all, we all are learning from this because it helps us to see God's honor, to love him more. And in, this, in doing this, it helps the, the malpracticing that we, we tend to do, sometimes quite on not being aware that we're doing it. Self-depreciation and all the, all the wrong things that we admit for ourselves. And how can we know the nothingness of error if we don't know the all goodness that God has made his children? I am so grateful to be here tonight. And thanks for all the testimonies that attest to the potency of truth and love. Thank you. Mary. Good evening, everyone. I um, just have a few things to read. One from Canada. A prisoner who I wrote to is studying Christian science and he wrote the following to me when he was in jail. I approached an inmate. He's serving a life sentence. I gave him some cookies. That act of kindness seemed to melt the Iceman, and he gave me one of the unit po po posters. Even with some animosity between us, it subsided in that moment. He has recently been released to a government halfway house. And then another from Canada. Recently in a calendar statement, we were drawn to the article, The Beatitudes by Doris White Evans. A few years ago, when I first learned of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, I would go onto the website and read the many articles and past Bible lessons. And I would hear about Mrs. Evans as mentioned at the round tables or in a Bible study. I must admit, I grew quite curious to know more about her and was able to then find her sermons and articles on the website and to purchase a copy of her book, which I obtained from the Plainfield store. The ideas presented in the book are very inspiring, encouraging, and practical. I'm grateful to learn about Mrs. Evans and her deep love and devotion to the cause of Christian science. I thank you so much for making available all the precious and timely articles that are on the website. And then Australia. Thank you for speaking of Mrs. Evans' experience of the Sermon on the Mount. That was what her article was about that was on the website. Her writings confirm the principles of truth that make up the sermon are unquestionable and that we alone are responsible to live in and ask them. The sermon is spiritual nectar and sweetly satisfies the heart, soul, and mind of the disciple of truth. The sermon teaches the disciple how to restore everything to original reality, spirit. All concepts of a personal me and of sin and merit are dissolved by taking in the ne nectar of that sermon. Overall, Jesus, the Christ, Master, in the Sermon on the Mount, tells the disciples what is required to be understood. Carol, our, our soul rings in unison as the sermon draws us to it with its sweet nectar. Glory must go to Jesus of Nazareth for demonstrating spiritual life while embodied on earth. That achievement is beyond comprehension still. And then this is from South Dakota. Much gratitude for all the workers at the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It really is a blessing to be able to access website support any time of the day and to be able to listen in on Bible studies, roundtables, and church services, and listen to the weekly watching point and the weekly lesson 
as well as the daily duties. Like a mighty army moves the Church of God. Thank you all for your love and dedication. And then the last is a testimony from Virginia. First, I'd like to express my gratitude to the Plainfield Independent Christian Science Church, gratitude for the website, the YouTube postings, and practitioner support. I want to share an experience I recently, I recently had when I was protected by God's love. Anytime I need to drive somewhere, I try to make, take a moment to pray before I start the car. I don't always remember, but when I do, I spend just a few moments being grateful and knowing that I'm protected by my Father Mother God. The other night I had to drive home late in the evening. For some reason when I got in my car, rather than the usual 15 to 30 seconds, I spent a good five minutes in prayer. Then I started my drive. A few minutes later I was on the highway and I noticed there were signs saying construction ahead. I didn't pay too much attention to that as I was lost in thought. But I did notice that the highway was unusually crowded for that time of night. A few seconds later, my mind snapped to full attention as I realized I was about to crash into a construction barrier that had appeared without, with almost no warning. Only an immediate move to the left lane could save me from being in a high-speed accident. I remember how crowded the highway was and I threw a quick glance over my left shoulder to see if the lane was clear. It was completely clear without a car in sight in spite of how crowded the highway had been. I moved to the left lane just in time to avoid the barriers and continued on my way as if nothing happened. This all occurred in a fraction of a second. Only then did I realize that I had been saved by God's all-encompassing care. It happened so fast, it could only have been the hand of God. Thank you tonight for the beautiful readings, the hymns, testimonies. I'm so grateful to have learned this, the law of progress, God's law. I once had a practitioner who asked me to make note every day of how I progressed, which at the time I thought was difficult. But if you look for ways you're improving, you will find those ways. And, and I had to remember, too, the progress is from within. It comes from God. It's nothing that you can force or shove your way into. It's the unfoldment from within. God is responsible for our progress, and he cares for each and every one of us. I'm so grateful to be learning all these lessons in this church. Thank you all, and have a good night. Thank you.